Hello everyone. So, as you heard, my name is William Hegenkamp. I'm 18 years old, currently attending IP2 here at Sedepot University. Also, I live in Nershafinia and like to hang out with family and friends. But, that's about it. Now, I will ask you a simple question. Yes or no answer question. And I'd like you to raise your hands if you feel like the answer is yes. And keep it down if you feel like the answer is no. The question goes as follows. Do you want to become rich? As we can tell, almost, if not everyone in here, wants to become rich. And with that being said, I have to admit something. That so do I. <laughs> For me, wanting to become rich is nothing recent. For as long as I can remember, I've been telling people that I want to become rich. An example of this would be my grandparents asking me about what I want to become. They were expecting the normal kind of answer, policeman, firefighter, but me wanting to become rich, that's exactly what I told them. So I said, I want to become rich. They laughed at me, but played along since I was just a child. And ever since, that has stuck with me. And then you might start to ask yourself, why is that? Well, I believe it has to do with another childhood passion or dream of mine, which is cars. Or maybe cars. <laughs> I love talking about cars and looking at them, even so much that my first word ever spoken was auto, which is the Dutch word for car. And also, when my mother was out walking me in the car when I was small, I used to hang over the edge to see the cars passing by, and she would have to keep me from falling out. So yeah, I definitely like cars. And now that I'm turning 18, it's even better. So now I can also drive them. But this is all great, and so on. But you can see, as we're talking about cars like the Ferrari in the picture, there's a problem. Cars like these don't come cheap. In order to sustain a habit of driving expensive cars, you need money. So getting rich would quite essentially solve this problem. And that's how my interest of becoming rich has arisen. Now, this is obviously not the only uh, case of me wanting to become rich, but the main one. The second reason is more general, and I think you'll be able to relate. It's a superpower of mine, or not. It's more of a curse, because whenever I want to buy something, let's say I'm shopping for a jacket, I go into the store, and I see a nice jacket, I look at it, looks good, but then I look at the price, and then I have a heart attack, and then I have to go to the hospital, and I have to pay medical bills. I'm just kidding, but you get the picture. I have an expensive taste, and with my luck, that jacket is probably also the only jacket I like. So, yeah, store owners hate me, or I have just expensive taste, but either way, getting rich would also solve this problem. Now, I talked a lot about my childhood so far, and how wanting to become rich has become a part of my life. But now that I'm growing older, my perspective is starting to change a bit. Let's look at what being rich is defined as. The word rich is defined as abundance or great deal of something. And usually we connect this to money, as that's how the word is used. If you say he or she is rich, we assume they have a lot of money, because, as I said, that's how it's used. It doesn't necessarily have to mean money, but let's stick with that for a while. When are you really rich? Am I rich when I make a hundred thousand crowns? Am I rich when I make a million crowns? Am I rich when I make five million, ten million, hundred million? I could keep on going. There is no real set limit for when you're rich. Once you pass a figure, it's not really like, now you're rich, now you're not. It's more of a barrier, so to say. But I like the statement on the board, because once you have enough money, or whatever, 
to pursue a lifestyle you desire. You can't wish for anything else. And the key here really is a desired lifestyle. What do you desire? That's really what this is all about. Now, if we go back to me. For me, when I envision myself being rich, I see myself as being happy. So, therefore, I would say that when I'm happy, I'm also rich, to some extent at least. I do still like the cars. <laughs> Once you realize your desired lifestyle, you have the power to decide if you want to obtain it or not. But you have to make sure that you know what you want. Now, once you realize what you want, in this case, being happy for me, I have put together a concept which we can look at in order to get there. I call it the input-output machine. And the box in the middle is the actual machine. Then you have some input and you have some output. In this case, the input is good and the output is good. An example of this would be hanging out with friends that make you feel good. Then the input would be your friends and the output is you feeling good. If you change it up, you might have some bad stuff as input and bad stuff as output. If you take the same example, this would be hanging out with people that drag you down and put you in a negative mood, therefore the outcome is bad. And this seems really simple. Just take away the bad stuff and you're left with only good stuff. But if it was that easy, we wouldn't be rich by now. We have to keep timing to accountants here. As short-term and long-term outcomes differ. It's easy to believe that something short-term equals something long-term. And that is true if we're talking about actions. If you're doing something short-term many times, then all of a sudden it becomes a long-term thing. But here we're talking about outcomes. And that is not always the case. An example of this would be my mother lecturing me as a child. That's me right there. And short term, this was a horrific experience. And I sure hope my mother didn't enjoy it either. But once you look at it long term, it becomes something good. Because down here you see me growing up, facing real world consequences, and becoming a better person in general. You can also see that I put school on the board here. That's the same case. Short term, school is bad. Yes, I said it. <laughs> no, but it's bad. I don't like waking up in the morning, and I think neither do you. But once we look at it long term, it's really positive. You're just sacrificing a small portion of your life in order to enrich in the rest of it. So then it all of a sudden becomes worth it. Now, we can also look at an example of the opposite, where something short-term good becomes a long-term negative. This would be skipping class, as short-term you're having a good time, right? But long-term you're missing out on stuff you have to learn or so, and that will result in you may losing out on a job opportunity down the line. So therefore, we really have to take into account all the short and long-term outcomes. Now, let's look at what I've been saying so far. I've told you that, at least for me, being rich is to a great extent to be happy. And once you know what you want, your desired lifestyle, you have the power to, come, to get there. For me, being happy, I have to focus on things that make me happy. And last but not least, we have to keep time in mind here as the outcomes differ. Some short-term things may be kind of boring or harsh, but long-term, they're really worth it. Now, what I've been saying so far is important, and I hope you reflect on this. But the last slide is really the one you should be focused on. And that is, what matters to some might not matter to others. This highly individual what you find interesting or what you want to pursue. Just because I like cars doesn't necessarily mean that you like cars. So the main goal of this presentation is to make you think how can you be the richer version of yourself. Thank you.